Hey guys, how's it going? It's Marauder here, and today I'm going to show you five things you probably didn't know about AoE 2. Number one, dark age markets are dangerous. Now, we rarely get a market in the dark age, but sometimes in a scenario or a campaign, there is one, or a map like Mega Random. What you might not have known is that markets can actually attack buildings, as you see here in this test. The range is limited to only one tile, though, and they can't attack anything that isn't directly touching the market. Now, this also applies to units, as we're about to see here. I've created a little scenario where I have a Mangadai, and I attack the Mangadai, and it's doing approximately one damage per every two seconds. However, once the Mangadai is out of range, it stops hurting it. Also, if you have an archery range or a stable, they can actually do damage in Dark Age, and these buildings are very common in Mega Random maps and scenarios and campaigns, as I mentioned before. A Siege Workshop can't actually damage anything, and is pretty useless in the Dark Age. Alternatively, a Monastery can actually hurt units and buildings as well, similar to the Stable and Archer range, and the Market. Number 2. Mamluks are classified as cavalry archers. I've set up a test here between a Huskarl and a Mamluk. Theoretically, the Huskarl should only do 11 damage since the Mamluk has one melee armor, but the Huskarl is actually able to kill the Mamluk in only four shots. I've set up another test with another melee throwing range unit, the Throwing Axeman, and be super cool if this bonus applied to the Throwing Axeman as well. Buddy, come on. <laughs> If I can ever hit it anyway. So it should theoretically do more than 11 damage, and it looks like it's only doing 11 damage. Oh, that's a bummer. Disappointed! Number three, you can purposely glitch units across the water. I've done this quite a few times in scenario maps on fast speed, and what you want to do is get a large group of units, usually cavalry units, um, and if you patrol really closely to the water's edge, sometimes your units can glitch across. It's a lot easier in lag, but I should be able to do it in not too much time here. Finally! I finally did it! Oh my god, that took like 20 minutes, and I think because there's no lag in single player. Anyway, proves you can do it. As far as the usefulness in-game goes for this, I'm going to have to give this tip an F for fucking useless, because that took me 20 fucking minutes to do. So, only if there's unrealistic, unobtainable levels of lag, or an HD game. Number four. You can build towers in Dark Age if you already own a tower on the map. Now, this is something a lot of Fortress players might know. I'm saying Fortress players as if there are any. There's barely any Fortress games being hosted, and that's why a lot of people don't know this. If you already own a tower in Dark Age, you can actually place a foundation in Dark Age of a new tower. Let's say you ha randomly had a tower in an Arabia game, the same standard goes, it's not just Fortress, it's any game where you already own a tower. Number 5. You can actually drop off resources, your own resources, in the TC of an ally. So let's say you're playing a game like Nomad, and you've had a TC war, and you've run away, and you're asking your allies for resources and help, and they're not responding at all. And you have 274 wood. Well, if you find a TC of your ally, you can actually go over with your villager, which I'm going to do right now, chop one wood, 
even though you can't manually drop it off, if you garrison your villager, that resource does go into your stockpile, and now you can drop a TC. This is the most applicable in-game tip I've given you today, although by that point in the game, you probably should have already quit and should stop wasting your time.